the Unreal Engine 4 editor, which we can see here, is going to be our default interface for working with the engine and our projects. So this is our default layout. I've created a project and we're going to go ahead and cover the layout using this project. As we can see here, we have a few different windows. On the left, we have our modes window. This is where we can add some items quickly. We can work with like our landscape and our geometry. At the top, we have our main toolbar. This is where we can do things like saving our current project, going into plain editor mode, and then also testing the project out. In the middle, we have our viewport. This is our main viewport into our map so we can see what we're working with. At the bottom, we have our content browser. Basically, think of this as our file explorer for our assets inside of our project. Top right, we have our world outliner. This is an overview of all the individual items we have inside of this level. And then at the bottom, we have our details panel. And this is where we can see the individual parts for our items that we've clicked on so we can adjust them if needed. Now, the default layout is customizable. Everything in here is a window. We can move a window by clicking on the tab and dragging it and dropping it wherever we want it. We can resize windows by clicking on the dividers between windows and moving them to where we want them. We can hide the tab. So for example, I like where the content browser is. I can right click and hide the tab and now it's gonna collapse it. Or we can click on that little arrow, unhide the tab, and then that will allow us to move it to the new spot. Now, if we get to the point where we've moved things around and we don't really like it, we want to go back to defaults, we can go to window, reset layout. After it saves, it's going to go ahead and reset the project and put our layout back to the defaults. Now, there are a few hidden things that we have access to that are helpful, needed. In the top right, we have the name of our project, in this case, editor overview. We can see the version number of the engine we're using for this project, as well as any branch. So for example, I'm using the launcher version of 4.18, and we can see that here. Next to this, we have a little hat icon. This is for our tutorials. We can click on that, and we're now presented with a list of tutorials. We could, for example, welcome to the editor, and this will walk us through some basics of the editor, like we're covering now. This is useful if you need some quick information for learning a topic you might not know yet. In the top left, we have our more common menu options. We have our file menu. This is where we can load and save assets as well as maps. This is where we get access to things like cooking our content for our project so that we could then package the project into the appropriate platform that we want. Our edit is our undoing, copying, pasting, and duplicating, but also quick access to our preferences and settings as well as our plugins window for adding and removing plugins to our project. The Windows menu is for Windows. This is where we can get access to things like maybe a duplicate details panel. You can dock this extra one somewhere else and now have two details panels. We have our developer tools, things like our debugging and analyzing systems, as well as our saving and resetting layout options. Finally, we have our help menu this is where we can get quick access to our documentation, our references, quick links to our answer hub and support forums, and other useful things. Understanding the basic layout is a great way to get started. The viewport is our view into our world. It allows us to see what is inside of our level, manipulate those items, and basically visually work with everything. So we're going to take a quick look at it. Our viewport is this giant item in the middle of our screen where we can view our project. We can see what we're working on. And it has a few options. In the top left corner, we have our viewport options. This controls the way the viewport works and what we can see inside of it. For example, we can toggle things like real time and frames per second on. We can adjust our field of view if we want to change it to better match our project. We can toggle cinematic preview on and on. This gives us play controls if we're viewing a cinematic. We have game view, which I'll cover shortly in more detail, and immersive mode, which is basically full screen for the viewport and can be toggled here or the F11 key. Below this, we have bookmarks. This gives us the ability to jump quickly from one spot to another. You can see here I have three bookmarks. I can click on each of them and jump directly to a bookmark. 
or use the one, two, and three key on my keyboard to jump to preset bookmarks. If I move my view to somewhere I want, use the control and the number key, I can now have a new bookmark. I can jump from three to my new bookmark of four, which you can see here, I now have a new bookmark I set using the control option. You can also clear them here. Layouts gives us the ability to change how many viewports we have available. By default, we have one. We can go to layouts, and we can have two, three, or four in different configurations. These are just the defaults. I can go here, I can choose three panes. Now we have three viewports. Each viewport is independent. They can all change the way that they appear as well as they're shaded. So for example, this one is top wireframe. I could change that to maybe left and unlit mode. And now I would have a left unlit viewport independent of the other two viewports. I'm gonna go ahead and reset these back to default. Now the options next to this are the way our viewports look and the way they are shaded and also visualization options. So by default, we have our perspective view. We could change this to any of the orthographic views by using the shortcuts or by clicking the options. And then we have our view mode. By default, we're gonna have lit. We could change this to unlit or we could change this to wireframe or any of the other modes that allow us to better visualize our options. And all these details are covered in the documentation. Lastly, we have show. This changes the way the editor shows different parts of your project. And this is for the editor only. So for example, maybe I don't want to see the grid. The grid is this item over here that we use for snapping and various other placement. If I don't want to see it anymore, I can go to show grid and now the grid will disappear. I can go back to show grid and now I can view it. Now by default, we're in the editor mode. This is where we can see things like our icons for our actors. We have our game view. It's the G button or clicking here. And now you'll notice our icons disappear. The game view tries to give you a more game view or project view looking view. It's very similar to if you were to preview it in the editor or standalone mode. It's a quick way of visualizing what it might look like when you run the project. They are separate views. Editor and game view are separate and the show options are independent. Let me go back to this view. I'm going to grab this material and make my walls glow. Now, if I'm working in here, I might start to have a problem because now I have this overwhelming bloom and it's going to make my level design a little difficult. So I might want to go into show post-processing bloom and now it's a little better. Now I don't have the bloom effect I can work in my editor. But now I want to preview what it looks like. Well, I can go into play and it's going to show me what it looks like. Or I could go into play and standalone and it's going to compile a few things and show me what it looks like. But maybe I want to see it quicker. Well, I'll hit my G key and now I can see my bloom is re-enabled. I've disabled game view, I'm in editor view, show, post-processing, bloom is unchecked. I will enable game view, I'll go to show, post-processing, and now bloom is checked. These settings are independent of each other and they are separate for those views only, so keep that in mind. You could have both of them not show the bloom and maybe you just simply don't want the grid showing when you're in game view, but it's fine when you're in the editor. It's your choice, it's your option. The upper right controls the way we work with the items inside of our view. If I click on an item, we'll click on this cube for example, we get our manipulator widget. And by default it's going to look like this, and it's going to allow us to move or translate this object. Up here in the top right we are showing we can select and translate this object, or we can use the W key as a shortcut. Next to that is rotate, or the E key, and scale, or the R key. So we can do W, E, and R to change through our tools, or the space bar to toggle to the next one. Once we have one we want, we can click on one of the manipulators here. Z is vertical, Y is going to be horizontal, usually left and right, and X is going to usually be forward and backwards, or the red one. We can click on them and move the item as such. You can also click on the combined widget, for in this case we'll click on these two, it's going to be our Y and our Z, it allows to move it on the Y and the Z at the same time. Now you may notice it's snapping in the world view. I move this item around based on the worlds X, Y, and Z. If I click on the manipulator next to this, this will toggle between world and local view. 
So let's say we take this item, we're going to rotate it, and now it's going to be angled like this. If I want to move this in the direction the item is facing, I need to use local view. World view, relative to the world, click the icon, local view, it's relative to the items itself and its local axes. I'm going to go ahead and reset that back to default. Next to this, we have our snapping option. We have how the item snaps when we translate, how the item snaps when we rotate, and how the item snaps when we move it. By default, it's going to be set to grid snapping. Surface snapping is an option you can enable here. Grid snapping means the item will snap to the grid that we can see here. Now I have a cube. We'll go ahead and we'll look at our cube here. And we can see that it is, it's kind of off. It's not really snapped to this grid. If we were to move it, it's going to look weird. Well, my snapping set to 100, and my grid, as you can see, is set to 100. But my X and the Y aren't multiples of 100. It's kind of off. Let me change my snapping to something like 10. Now my grid will get smaller, and now you can see it moves in increments of 10. Maybe set to increments of 5, and the grid will adjust accordingly to whatever you've set it up as. And these are adjustable inside of the editor preferences. This is for toggling on and off the translate snapping. So you can see now it will not snap. And we have the same options here for our rotational snapping and degrees, and our scaling snapping and the units for scale snap.